So a good way of making animals live longer is to take away their food. Make them rely on those survival instincts that says to keep them younger when there is less optimal conditions for reproduction. And then when the conditions are good again, they can resume aging and reproduce. At least that is the evolutionary reason for why the dietary restriction pathways are there and why we get a life extension from it. So there are 12 dietary restriction methods for the C. elegans worm. And the C. elegans worm is a good candidate for tests like this because it has a relatively short lifespan and its metabolic pathways are relatively simple so it's not too confusing for us to test to work on. There are the 12 methods are axonic, CDLM, VDR, LDR, DP, SDR, SDRH, MSDR, SDRC, IF, VD, and DD, and the ET mutation. So axonic is a type of liquid medium. Um, CDLM is stands for stands for chemically defined liquid medium. BDR is bacterial dietary restriction, and it's just that diluting bacteria and liquid cultures, um, like CDLM and axonic, but it's a different culture. Uh, then LDR is another version of BDR, and it's a different liquid medium. DN, there's DP and SDR, which stands for solid dietary restriction, and it's just serial dilution to bacteria on agarose plates after the, the fourth day of adulthood. SDRH is SDR, but instead of the fourth day, it's at the second day, and along with it, FUDR is used. Um, MSDR is SDR, but at day one of adulthood with FUDR, and SDRC is at day five adulthood with FUDR. IF stands for intermittent feeding, so it's fed every two days. BD and DD stands for bacterial deprivation and dietary deprivation, so it, we're pretty much just starving the C. elegans worm and that extends lifespan. And finally, the ET mutation reduces the pharyngeal pumping rate of the worms. So what is FUDR? FUDR is what is used to make uh, counting worms easier by inhibiting progeny. And progeny is just replicating, making more of the worms. So if you make less, so if, if they do not keep replicating themselves, then it's going to be much easier to deal with them. There are some side effects though. It slows down the growth of bacteria, and that is their food source. So if you screw down there, if you lower the amount of food source, then it may change the organism's response pathways. You know, when there's less food, uh, when there's this amount of food, maybe the, the animal might use the MK pathway. And if there's a lesser amount of food, maybe they might use the TOR pathway. There are individual pathways that depend on the, 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 depend on the situation. Another problem is that the FUDR may extend the lifespan of the worm because it takes a lot of energy to reproduce. But if it doesn't reproduce, which is what FUDR does, then it saves a lot of energy enabling the animal to live longer. Next is the DR method gene relationship or how the method of the dietary restriction such as PDR, SDR, CDLM relates with the gene because that's what that's what scientists usually do. They usually have a method or the 12 methods and then they test one by one all of these genes for all of these methods to see what whether there is a, an effect or if the gene is more effective for this method or it is less effective for this method. Now this is a web of metabolic pathways. Um, each box stands for a metabolic pathway, but realize that each of these pathways has many nodes in it. It looks like a food chain rather than just a bunch of boxes. So how important is this gene in, dietary, in a dietary restriction method? So scientists have developed a certain criteria to to answer that. So if it's dependent, or if the, the method is dependent on this gene, it means that it cannot run without it. I mean, that there wouldn't be a life extension without it. And if it's totally dependent, that also means if we knock down the gene, then that means there won't be a life extension, which means the life extension pathway has been shut because the doorway, the node that leads to it, is no longer there. If it's independent, that means then if we knock it down, 
then the, the method then it has nothing to do with longevity. If it's not determined, then we just haven't tested it. And if it's partially de dependent, then that means it has a certain effect on longevity if we knock it down, but it's not 100% dependent on it. So some of the genes tested for in the C. elegans worm is DAF16, DAF2, AAK2, SKN1, PHA4, and all these genes code for a particular protein. Um, the FOXO gene has to do with insulin, the insulin receptor, and DAF16 and DAF2 works together with FOXO to extend life. The E2 mutation, or it's just, uh, it works with the pharyngeal pump rate, and all the others which I'll go through later on, has a specific receptor, or it is a receptor in many cases. The SIR2 genes are really important, uh, SIR2.1 and 2.3, but I'll go through that later. All right, see ya.